Let me greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. This Bible study is about the first four seals in Revelation chapter 6, which are known as uh, the four horses of the apocalypse. If you wish to look at the scriptures in your Bibles, I suggest you get four bookmarks for Revelation 6, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, as we will be going to and fro between these scriptures, and I will be going to them quite quickly. So let's make a start. Go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I saw and heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and see, a white horse, and he who sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out to overcome, even that he might overcome. Now looking at this in a natural sense, it looks like he could refer to Jesus Christ, as he is described like this in Revelation 19. Some prominent teachers, Bible teachers like Derek Prince believe this, so I can understand why so many people think so. However, I do not believe that it refers to Jesus, and I'm going to explain why. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 19. Verse 11 And I saw heaven opened, and see, a white horse, and he who sits upon it is called Faithful and True. In righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and on his head many crowns. And he has a name written that no one knows except himself. And he is clothed with a garment dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The first point to make is that the rider on the white horse in Revelation 6 has only one crown, and Jesus in Revelation chapter 19 has many crowns. The second point is, in Revelation chapter 6, the rider that goes out, he goes out to overcome, so he's not yet done it. And Jesus has already overcome when he raised from the dead. Revelation 3.21 tells you how he did it. And in John 16.33, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. The third point is, there is a difference between the crowns worn by the rider in Revelation 6 and the one worn by Jesus Christ. In Revelation 6 verse 2, the word crown is Stephanos in the Greek. The Strong's number is 4735. It's from the verb Stepho, which means to encircle. That which forms an encirclement, a crown, a chaplet, a wreath, conferred on a victor in public games. Metaphorically, a crown, a reward, a prize. Here are three scriptures which give examples of this same type of crown. 1 Corinthians 9.25 And everyone who strives has self-control in all things. Now they indeed do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. 2 Timothy 4.8 From now on there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all those who also love his appearing. James 1.12 Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. The crowns worn by Jesus are different to that. In Revelation 19.12, the word for crowns, diadema, plural of diadema, 
The strongest number is 1238, a diadem, a badge of a sovereign. So this then is a king's crown. There are only two of the scriptures uh, in the New Testament where this word appears, apart from Revelation 19, and here they are. Revelation 12.3 And another sign was seen in heaven, and see, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. Revelation 13.1 And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and ten crowns on his horns, and names of blasphemy on his heads. It seems that horns refer to kings in scripture, and I'm going to show you two scriptures now to prove it. Daniel 7.24 And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings who shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be different from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Revelation 17.12 And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, who have not received a kingdom yet, but receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast. Point to note. Each of these kings had one crown, but Jesus had many crowns, and he is the king of kings. The fourth reason, I'm going to say this, that to think that that rider in Revelation chapter 6 was Jesus Christ is a failure to rightly divide the scripture. Whenever you get a scripture like that and you want to interpret it correctly, you need to put other scriptures with it. And this is what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to give you three other references to this same event. So go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. This is referring to the end times that the disciples are asking about, and this one is referring to false Christs that come. So they look like Jesus, but they're not him. And notice they're coming out to deceive many. Notice the word Christ is not in italics. I will make a point about this in the next scripture. Mark 13, 3. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now if you take a look at the word Christ in that scripture, it's in italics. That means that there is no word for it in the original Greek. Now, Bibles like the New King James and the Old King James, they all do this. They put the word in italics. And the Old King James here puts the word Christ in the same as I have. Uh, the New King James, unfortunately, didn't check it properly. They put the word he in. Now, this is an example of how to find these missing words in Scripture. Put parallel scriptures with it and find out where the word occurs in another one. We know the word means Christ because it told us in Matthew. Now go to Luke 21, 7. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, but what shall these things be 
And what will sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you are not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draws near, therefore do not you go after them. Now if you notice in this scripture that the word Christ again is in italics, so it's not in the original Greek, the Old King James puts the word Christ in, which I think is correct. Uh, the New King James puts the word he in. Uh, so again, uh, this is what you've got to do if you want to rightly divide the scripture. You've got to put these scriptures together. There have been numerous false Christs throughout the centuries. There was one who turned up around A.D. 135 was when he died, but he was declared to be the Christ by a rabbi called Akiba, and they waged war against the Romans, they rebelled against the Romans, and eventually uh, Bar Kokhba and many, many Jews died, and he died in A.D. 135. So he was just one of many. Recent ones that I can remember in my lifetime, there was one called Maitreya. I believe David Icke once said he was uh, the son of God or the son of the Godhead, according to uh, Wikipedia, after visiting a spiritualist. David Koresh, who died in Waco, Texas in 1993, was another one. And I was told the other day that there's a man called Reverend King in Nigeria, and I was told he was Jesus Christ. So I see no reason to think that this seal has not been released yet. So let's go and take a look at the second seal. Revelation chapter 6, verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. And another horse that was red went out, and it was given to him who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and a great sword was given to him. This is obviously war, and the colour of the horse was red, which happens to be the colour of blood. So go now to Matthew 24, and we'll see the same scene. Verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Mark 13, verse 7. And when you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be troubled, for such things are necessary, but the end is not yet. Luke 21, verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end is not yet. Wars have been taking place throughout the centuries since John wrote the book of Revelation. Last century, for example, we had two world wars and many others on a smaller scale. So I would not say that this seal has not yet been released. It looks like it probably has. So let's go and take a look now at the third seal. Revelation chapter 6 verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come and see. And I looked and see a black horse, and he who sits on it having a balance in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. This is clearly indicating a famine of some sort. Uh, it's reported that a child dies of hunger every 15 seconds, and many adults also. So, again, I would not say that this seal has not yet been released. But go to Matthew 24, 7, and we'll see some extra information. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, 
and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. These are the beginning of sorrows. Mark 13, 8 For a nation shall be raised against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in various places and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Luke 21, 11 And there shall be earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there shall be both fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Now famines are mentioned in all three of these scriptures and two of them also mentions earthquakes and pestilences which Revelation did not mention. So let's take a look at some of these. Let's have a look at two definitions of pestilence. The Oxford Popular English Dictionary. Pestilence is a fatal epidemic disease, especially bubonic plague. Cassell Popular English Dictionary. Pestilence, any contagious disease that is epidemic and deadly, especially bubonic plague. The plague was the cause of the Black Death that swept through Asia, Europe and Africa in the 14th century and killed an estimated 50 million people. Those figures in the 14th century are really guesswork. They do not refer to a world population. Epidemics in the last and present century include Spanish flu, Asian flu, Hong Kong flu, bird flu, swine flu, AIDS, SARS, Ebola, and currently, of course, we're going through the coronavirus. Therefore, I would not say that this seal has not yet been released. There have also been many earthquakes and they've been increasing in the devastating effect that they have. So it looks to me like it's, it's probably been released. So let's go and take a look at the fourth seal now. Go to Revelation chapter 6 and we'll read verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. And I looked and see a pale horse, and his name who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed with him, and authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with death and by the beasts of the earth. Now this seal looks like it may be included in what we saw with the third seal, as it includes war and famine as well. But Matthew, Mark and Luke do not mention this separately. Look at the estimates now for World War I. In 1914 the population was approximately 1.8 billion. The World War I dead were between 20.5 to 22 million, uh, which is between 1 and 1.2 percent of the population. Spanish flu deaths, which followed 1918 to 1919, estimated at 20 to 50 million, between 1 and 2.8 percent of the population. So this is nowhere near what we saw uh, with about 25% of the population going in the, in the fourth seal. World War II estimates, 1939 population, about 2.3 billion. World War II dead, 70 to 85 million, between 3 and 3.7% 3 of the population. So again, this is nowhere near 25%. Current population in 2020 is approximately 7.8 billion. Looking at these figures, it seems fairly obvious to me that the fourth seal has not been opened yet. Uh, currently, 7.8 billion just under 2 billion people 
will be removed from the earth in a short space of time when this fourth seal goes, even at current population. And if it takes some time before it comes, uh, then it could even be greater. I want to uh, explain to you now what I believe is going on. Because we know there is somebody behind the scenes who is manipulating these things and trying to use them for his own benefit. So I want to try and explain what I believe the devil's strategy is in this situation. So go to Genesis 11, 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had slime for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach to heaven, and let us make a name, lest we are scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people are one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Come, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from there upon the face of all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Now it says in verse 6, The people are one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. There is obviously strength in unity, not only for God's people, but also for wicked people. And so the devil had all the people at that time, all in one place, all with the same idea, trying to build a tower up to heaven. It's like they were imagining they, by their own works they could get into heaven in some way. Just like people do today, thinking that their good deeds are going to get them in without receiving the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, there was a civil war in America between 1861 and 1865, between the Union in the North and the Confederacy in the South. When it was all over, uh, the states in the North and in the South united together and they became what is now the United States of America. And some of the countries like Alaska and Hawaii, they joined in as well. So there is coming together a uniting of nations. World War II in Europe, end result? was the United Nations and the European Union. It seems like people, to avoid war, decide to unite together. I think this is the devil's plan, because he wants his people to unite. World War II ended in Europe at the end of April 1945, uh, and it ended completely uh, in September 1945, when the Japanese surrendered. Fifty nations signed a charter on the 26th of June 1945 and in October 1945 the United Nations officially came into existence. So what is happening? There is a, a, a coming together again of nations and it looks to me like the devil is trying to unite, unite his people. We know where it will end up because in Revelation 17.12, this is what it says. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not received a kingdom yet, but receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast. These have one mind to give their power and authority to the beast. 
So what we're seeing is global problems now appearing on the earth and people trying to avoid these in the future, deciding to unite together. In recent times, we've had things like climate change, now coronavirus. Everybody is now trying to work together to find a solution to these kind of problems. And this is what I think the devil is doing. The devil is using the disasters that come on this earth to get his people to unite. It looks like he's using the latest coronavirus epidemic to collapse the economies of the countries. The governments will have to borrow money to avoid a complete disaster. And where will they get it from? The World Bank. Proverbs 22, 7 says that the borrower is servant to the lender. So this will give whoever's behind the World Bank control over the governments. The governments will no longer be able to be independent as they will be servants to the World Bank. At the same time, the governments have now brought in laws to take away the freedom of the people, dictating how many times you can go out in a day and what for. This has never been done as long as I can remember, and I can go back as far as World War II, and I don't think they even did it then. So the devil is getting everybody to become submissive to powers that he will ultimately control. We know that it's heading for a new world order under the Antichrist when he shows up, because it's written in the word of God. So here is my understanding of the four seals. The first three have probably been released, but the fourth one has not. When it comes, it will include war and will be a major disaster that will cause the people of the world to want to unite to avoid another one. To do this, they will have to get rid of everyone who will not join them. And by God's grace, informed Christians won't do it. Coming under world governments like that and one world religion is not for genuine Christians. That will lead to the fifth seal. They will be out to destroy the Christians to get rid of them and they will bring in the agenda of world peace. This will be what they will say and it's for the good of the people and we'll have peace on the earth. But according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them because Jesus will return and put it all right. So here's my advice. If you're not a Christian, you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior before it's too late. If you're a weak Christian, one that doesn't keep the commandments of God, then I suggest you start to get stronger. Get into the Word, read it, meditate it, start to do what the Word of God says. So when the time comes, you'll be strong enough to resist. If you're a strong Christian, then help the weak. This is what you need to do. Help those who are not so good at doing what God says. Help them to come to the place where they can be strong. So that's my take on what the first four seals are. And I hope you've learned something from it. And if you have, please give God all the glory. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Click center to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click top right to see more videos and go to our website to see great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies and lots more. God bless you.